Episode 1, Part 1, The Hatchetfield Ape Man. Witchwood Forest, dark, mysterious, the alleged home of some of Hatchetfield's most terrifying urban legends. The Bella Maqua, the Muckwitch, Lumber Axe, the Mad Woodsman, and of course, there's him. Donna Daggett co-host of Hatchetfield's Morning Cup of News, stands at the edge of a vast, misty grove. I've come here to the Witchwood to talk with one woman who claims to have had her own harrowing close encounter. It must have been nine or ten years ago when it happened. Take a holiday here in Hatchetfield. This is Lucy Stockworth, the real-life duchess and heir to the Stockworth estate in jolly old England. I spied a nighthawk nest in the tree, and the foolish little schoolgirl I was, I wanted to see the birds, so I started to climb. I had nearly made it when a branch snapped beneath me. I was so high the fall would have killed me. I'm sure of that, but he caught me. In those big, strong arms, whose arms covered in thick black fur, it was him. It was the woolly foot. That's right. Woolly foot. The Hatchet Field Ape Man. A monster to some, but to Lucy Stockworth, he's anything but. His eyes. They were kind. I knew he'd never hurt me. Miss Stockworth has returned to Hatchet Field every year since the death of her father, in hopes of snagging another glimpse at her elusive savior. And what will you do if you find Woolly again? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, what do you say to someone who saved your life? I suppose I'd thank him in whatever way I could. So there you have it. Is there an ape man lurking in the witchwood of Hatchetfield? And if so, is he friend or foe? This is Donna Daggett with Morning Cup of News. Back to you, Dan. That's amazing, Donna. Days later, 
Rain drizzles from a gray sky. A black Rolls Royce pulls onto the runway of a tiny airport. Lucy Stockworth emerges from the back seat and heads for a small private jet standing nearby. Waiting for her at the bottom of the air stairs with an open umbrella is her butler, Rupert. Any luck, Miss Lucy? Not this year, Rupert. Shame. A dreadful shame. I suppose there's always next year, if other things don't get in the way. Are you all right, Miss Lucy? Yes. It's just the rain. It makes me sad. Maybe this is just a childish dream. Goodbye, Hatchetfield. Maybe forever. You may be done with Hatchetfield, Miss Stockworth, but Hatchetfield is not done with you! Lucy turns Lucy turns to find an eccentric figure approaching. His hair is white. His black turtleneck clings to his body. Excuse me, who are you? My name is Professor Henry Hitchens. And if you'll indulge me and accompany me back to my home and laboratory on the edge of town, I'll show you something that'll knock your stockings off. The Rolls Royce weaves down a winding dirt road through the dense thicket of the Hatchetfield Witchwood. The trees are tall with pale, cracking bark. The car stops at the entrance of a gothic manor, filled with labyrinthine hallways and stained glass windows. The fortress-like abode of Professor Henry Higgins. Inside, Lucy follows the professor through a twisting corridor, her heels clicking on the black and white checkered tile floor. So you live alone out here? Until recently, yes. I find isolation conducive to my work. And what would that work be, Professor? I'm a biologist. I study the indigenous fauna of these woods. Nighthawks, timber wolves, bears even. But what I found in one of my traps 13 months ago was no bear. When I shaved the creature to treat a wound it was nursing, I found something that defies our current scientific understanding. A lost hominid species! The missing link between Homo erectus and Homo sapien. He may now lack his thick black fur, but I'm curious, Miss Stockworth. Could you help me identify him? Woollyfoot? Professor, are you telling me that you found the Hatchetfield Ape Man? No, Lucy. You're going to have to tell me what I found. Is your savior behind this door? They come to a large antique vault door with a porthole in the center. Higgins turns the locking wheel. A mechanism clanks. The door unlocks. Lucy's heart skips a beat. I can see him. That's why you're here. Now, before we enter the enclosure, I must warn you. In his shaved state, he looks very much like a man, but he is not. He is a wild animal, and he is dangerous. I understand. Promise me you'll never let your guard down. I won't. And promise one more thing, Lucy. Whatever you do, don't fall in love with him. Pigeons pulls the heavy vault door open. Beyond it lies a lush greenhouse. Raindrops pitter and patter on the glass ceiling. <laughs> Fleeting birds flitter through exotic trees and blooming flowers. Pigeons <laughs> cautiously steps into this jungle room, Lucy not far behind. Holy <laughs> foot! It's Henry! I brought you a very special visitor, so I want you to be on your best behavior. Leaves rustle. Lucy can just make out some thing lumbering through the foliage. Come on out. That's it. Good boy. Lucy's jaw drops. Her eyes go wide. There, emerging into a small artificial clearing, is him. The Hatchetfield Ape Man. He's hunched and grunting, but not entirely inhuman. In fact, his naked form seems almost 
familiar. My god! He does look like a man! Don't break eye contact, Lucy! He'll think you're submissive. Of course. The ape man advances, full of wonder. <laughs> he sniffs Lucy, startling her. <laughs> it's fine. He's just curious. Don't back away. Show him you're the dominant species. <laughs> Lucy's, uh, the ape man starts to lift Lucy's skirt to inspect it. She yanks it away from him. Is that any way to treat a lady? Good, Lucy. Show him who's boss. <laughs> The ape man rears to his full height, beating his chest. Lucy is having none of it. Now that's quite enough of that! Folded and ashamed, the ape man slumps to the ground. Very good. Now, forgive him. He needs correcting often, but afterwards you must always forgive him. I forgive you. Lucy touches the ape man's hand, and his expression brightens. Now. Go ahead. Introduce yourself. He understands words. Some. He's even picked up a few himself. He speaks. That's extraordinary. Yes, he's quite intelligent. Hello. My name is Lucy. My name, Lucy. <gasps> Professor. Keep going. Uh, um. No. No, 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 um, you're not Lucy, I'm Lucy, Lucy. Lucy. That's right, and you are? Huh? I mean, your name can't be the Woolly Foot, Lucy. Lucy. Lucy? Conk. Conk. Is that your name? I'm Conk. <laughs> <gasps> Professor, his name is Conk. Well, that's news to me. I don't know why, but he's opening up to you in ways I never thought possible. It's almost like he knows you. Do you remember me, Conk? Lucy fall, conk, catch. Huh? A teapot whistles. In a cozy kitchen, Hidgens hands Lucy a cup of Earl Grey. She's still beaming from her encounter with the ape man. Oh, he's incredible, Professor. Simply incredible. We have to alert the scientific community at once. And then what, Lucy? What will become of Conk? He'll be put in a cage, poked and prodded for the rest of his life. Oh, then what's to be done, Professor? He must learn. Learn our language, our ways. Then, when he understands his place in the world, let him decide his own fate. If he chooses to reveal himself to the world, we'll honor that. If he chooses to live as a man, we'll honor that. If he chooses to return to the woods, we'll honor that too. Whatever the case, Conk must decide for himself. Of course, it must be his decision. I only want him to be happy. You make him happy, Lucy. I do? You saw him in there. Within two minutes, he told you his name. Something he's kept from me for 13 months. Pigeon sets down his tea. He looks into the young woman's eyes. Lucy, will you stay? Will you help me teach Conk what it means to be a man? Professor, uh, I... I got plenty of room here, and I could use an assistant. Oh, well, I, I have a prior engagement. But it can wait. It has to. My God, I've been searching for him my entire life. <laughs> And now I found him. I'm, I'm never letting him go. Then we'll start tomorrow morning, bright and early. Conk has much to learn. The next day, back in the greenhouse enclosure, 
Professor Higgins stands before Conk, holding a cue card displaying a picture of a cat, accompanied by the letter C-A-T. Now, Conk, repeat after me. Cat. Cat. Lucy. <laughs> a distracted Conk couldn't care less about the card. Instead, his focus falls on Lucy, who sits nearby, sketching the ape man with a set of charcoals. Conk smiles at her. She blushes. Oh, Conk. Outside, Lucy leads Conk to a stable on the professor's property. She loads a saddle onto the back of a cream-colored mare. Conk recoils at the sight of it. Oh, 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 oh. don't be frightened, Conk. It's a horse. Oh. Oh. Horse friend. Conk slowly starts to brush the animal's mane. That's right, Conk. Lucy tightens her grip on the mare's reins. She taps the horse's sides with her riding boots, bending it into a gallop. Conk, who sits, who sits behind Lucy, wraps his arms around her waist, trying not to fall off. Lucy blushes again. That evening, the horse stands tied under a tree as Lucy and Conk poke their toes into a crystal clear pond. Their reflections ripple as a small summer storm rolls overhead. Conk shields its head from the from the droplets. It's cold rain, Conk. It won't hurt you. Waterfall from sky. Come, Conk, run with me. He takes his hand and the two frolic through a meadow. They're drenched, but laughing all the way. Later, Lucy and Conk lay in the soft, tall grass gazing up at the night sky. Conk points to the tiny lights above them. They're called stars. Stars. They're very beautiful. Very beautiful. <laughs> they are. Lucy, very beautiful. Oh, Conk. Days later, back in the greenhouse, Conk sits beside Lucy, inspecting a picture of an old-timey gentleman offering a handful of flowers to a very handsome lady. Why man give woman pretty things from ground? It's a bouquet. A man gives it to a woman when he loves her. Love? Yes. It's when two people enjoy each other's company and they want to stay together forever. Like, Conk and Lucy. Conk and Lucy have love. I... I... Ding dong. The bell to the front door rings. I should get that. In the front entryway, Lucy opened the large double doors. Hello? Well, well. Lucy Stockworth. You've been a very naughty girl. <laughs> On the steps of the manor, Lucy finds Jonathan Brisby, her upper crust fiance. Jonathan, <clears throat> what the hell are you doing here? Well, I expected a cheerier reception than that. Could a man join his fiance for a pleasant holiday? <laughs> a holiday which you were set to return from two weeks ago. You missed your dress fitting, you know. <clears throat> My mother is beside herself, and I must admit I've been dreadfully worried as well. I got caught up in things here. Did you receive any of my text messages? Oh, yes. And I figured that any place that could capture the attention of my flighty little Lucy must be quite something indeed. So I've come to Hatchetfield myself to see the sights, maybe do some hunting. <laughs> I hear the game's a spot of all right. I'll shoot you a Nighthawk. I'll have it stuffed as a souvenir. Then you won't have to come back to this silly place. Jonathan, I am. Lucy! What did I say about outsiders? Ascending a large staircase, Higgins appears quite perturbed. He's not an outsider, Professor. Um, we can trust him. This is Jonathan Bribsby, uh, my fiance. Fiance? I didn't realize you were entangled. Well, she is, Professor. Higgins! Henry Higgins! 
Oh, so you're the one who's spirited away my Lucy for some sort of secret experiment. <laughs> it must be quite the endeavor. Something to be shared with the rest of the world. We can't, Jonathan. And why not? Uh, professor, let's show him. Moments later, Lucy, Jonathan, and Higgins stand outside the antique vaulted door to Conk's enclosure. Jonathan can't believe his ears. An ape man, you say? <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> Don't you be so close-minded. He's right behind this door, and I won't have you frightening him. He's easily startled, and he's gentle, and he's kind, and he's wonderful. Yet, if I didn't know any better, I'd say you had feelings for this ape man. Lucy turns the locking wheel on the door. Higgins stops her. Lucy, if Conk feels threatened by this man, I can't guarantee his safety. He makes one wrong move. This creature could tear his arms right from their sockets. Fine. I'll be with him and Conk will do nothing to hurt. Lucy pulls the heavy vaulted door open, and the three pass through it into the greenhouse. Conk, I brought a new friend. Don't be shy. Come meet Jonathan. Conk emerges from the trees, sizing up this newcomer. Me, Conk. You, John Man. Isn't he extraordinary? Why, that's a man! It's obviously a naked man! That's where you're wrong, friend! I'm a biologist! You think I wouldn't know if it were a man? He only looks like a man. The professor shaved him! Well, that's rather convenient. He had to, to treat Conk's wounds and... and... Apply ointment to his skin! He had a rash all over his body. Yeah, I don't see any wounds or a rash. I see two obvious charlatans. I don't know what you're up to, but it's gone on for far too long. Come along, Lucy. We're going back to England at once. Jonathan grabs Lucy's arm and pulls her toward the door. Let her go. Conk, no! Conk beats his chest and advances on Jonathan. At Lucy's request, he subdues himself. I'm not afraid of you. You stupid man. Conk not man. Conk animal! <laughs> well, Conk, I hunt animals. Jonathan! We will see who hunt who. John man. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Just stop it! Lucy, what is the matter with you? These men are liars. Oh, you don't know that. You've always looked your nose down at me. But I know with every fiber of my being that Conk is the ape man that saved me when I was a little girl. And if you love me, if you have any affection for me at all, you'll at least try to see him the way I do. Lucy, I will humor you for the time being. But when you come to see the truth... Oh, I see the truth. About him and about you. What is that supposed to mean? Lucy removes a glove, revealing a ring. A ring she begins to twist from her finger. What are you doing with that engagement ring? Don't drop it on the ground. It's been in my family for generations. Lucy? Lucy! Lucy drops the ring and storms off. Jonathan picks it up and runs after her. <sighs> leaving Higgins with Conk. The professor watches them go, then lights a cigarette. Liar, charlatan, obviously a man. What do you say to that, Conk? He offers the cigarette to the ape man, who drops the act, bolts upright, and grabs it. Woo! I say that was a fucking close one, Hidge. Woo! Well, that's what happens when you ad lib, Ted Conk. Where'd you come up with that name? The Flintstones? We agreed the ape man's name would be Chumby. That's the name of an ape man. Chumby. Well, I'm sorry, all right? I blinked and Conk was the first thing that popped into my head. 
Oh, I knew I should have played the ape man and you should have played the professor. It's just that the professor seemed like such a meaty role and... Damn it! I guess it isn't how many lines you have, but what you do with them. Ped puffs the cigarette and pulls on a robe he has hidden in a hollow stump. So sue me, man. Alright? I flubbed the name. Lucy doesn't seem to mind. You see the way she looks at me? I told you, there's no denying the sexual charisma that radiates from this. Alright? And that's after you made me grow this. God, if I just had my mustache, Lucy and I would be on our honeymoon by now. What did I say about improvising? There isn't gonna be a honeymoon as soon as you're married, and the Stockworth fortune is ours. It's... For Miss Union Jack. Of course, the fiancé complicates things. Yeah. Where'd that asshole come from? Hey, ooh, maybe he's pulling a con too, huh? Maybe he's not really British. Oh, he's British, all right. Did you hear him? You can't fake an accent like that. I'll deal with Mr. Brisby. And you, honk, you stick to the script. Pow! Deep in the witchwood, Jonathan takes his best shot at a nighthawk perched on the branch of a tree. The branch splinters, but the bird flies off unscathed. Damn! Nearby, Higgins leans on his own rifle, lighting a stogie. Bruce, what? No cigar. You're going to have to be quicker than that if you want to bag yourself a nighthawk. They are wily birds. Unamused, Jonathan lowers his weapon, and the two hunters trudge further into the forest. Speaking of wily birds, what the devil do you think you're up to, Professor Hiddens? If you are, in fact, a real professor. <laughs> Heaven knows you don't have a real ape men. Ape or not, Lucy has got a new man in her life, and it's got you shitting, Peach Pits. <laughs> Tell me, Jonathan. Is your concern for Lucy or that sweet, sweet Stockworth estate? Why can't it be both? I fully intend on becoming the Duke of Stockworth, and no half-rate professor and a shaved monkey man are going to stand in my way. There really is no fool in you, is there, Jonathan? It's true. Conk is not the Hatchetfield ape man. He's just a guy named Head. I knew it! You liar! You dirty, dirty man! You've been filling Lucy's head with nonsense for weeks! Well, well, when I get back to the house, I'm going to expose you! <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? A choice of words amuses me, Jonathan. Don't you mean... If you get back to the house? What? I may be a half-rate professor, but I can count. In case you haven't noticed, you're out of ammo. Whereas my weapon is fully loaded. Pigeon shoulders his rifle and takes aim at Jonathan. You're mad. They called me mad! They all did! But I'll tell you what would be crazy. To let a goddamn crumpet is to fuck up my plan! But I'm a sporting gentleman. I'll give you a head start. Go ahead. Run, Johnny! And home to your queen! Jonathan takes off into the woods, running for his life. Pigeons gives chase, stomping through the fog like a maniac. And the bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down! Help me! Someone help me! My fair lady! Bang! Higgins fires a shot into the back of Jonathan's shoulder. He tumbles to the ground, rolling through the thorny bramble. Jonathan can't move. He's bruised and bleeding. Higgins approaches, looming over him. Please, Professor. Higgins takes aim. Welcome to America, you tea taxing son of a bitch. Bang! 
Back in the greenhouse, Lucy is distraught, distracted. Ted, again in the guise of Conk, kneels beside her. Lucy, what mean fiancé? Means that Jonathan and I are set to be married. What? Married? Uh, it's a contract uh, where two people agree to love each other for the rest of their lives as long as they so live. You love John Man? <sighs> oh, it's complicated. Ted takes her hand, laying it on thick. Lucy, no go with John Man. Lucy, stay. Find Jonathan. Good luck! He just took off. In the doorway, Hidgen stands back from the hunt, his gun in hand. Took off? What do you mean? Said something about going back to England and you being crazy and the marriage being off. Basically, go fuck yourself. Uh, uh, no, 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 that can't be. I, I have to get this straightened out. Lucy runs off back to her room. Ted furrows his brow. Lucy's sad. Of course she's sad. Her fiance is feeding the worms. You killed him. You killed him? I took care of it. Don't worry. They'll be reunited. After you're married, the same worms will eat her too. No. Oh, you don't hurt Lucy. You going soft on me, Ted? On the contrary, my friend, Lucy makes me hard, real hard, and I do some of my best thinking when I'm erect. I'm thinking, why does Lucy have to die at all? Hmm? If I marry her, I get all the money anyways, and a hot wife. She Who doesn't love you, you idiot! She loves the ape man! What are you gonna do, pretend to be conk for the rest of your life? Yeah! I like being conk! As Ted, I'm nothing, all right? When I'm conk, oh, I'm somebody, huh? The missing link. I got a beautiful woman telling me I'm amazing for doing just easy shit, like pointing to the color blue or reading words like cat and car. But that one test was hard, trying to find triangles and all those other shapes. You had conk take that just to make me look stupid. You are stupid! I have plans for that money, and now you think you're gonna cut me out. You realize what you're doing, don't you, Ted? You're killing the show with what you're doing! Doesn't matter. I'm the ape man, and there's not a damn thing you can do about it. Try to tell Lucy. You tell on me, and I'll tell on you. Murderer? Betrayed, Hidgens backs away toward the door. You forced my hand, my former friend. Prepare to be recast, Ted. Prepare to be written out. Boom! Thunder claps, lightning flashes. That night, Lucy paces around her room, her phone to her ear. She tries in vain to get a hold of her fiancé. Out the corner of her eye, she spots a red something wedged in the doorway. She picks it up. What's this? A rose? In the hallway outside, she finds another rose. And another. A whole trail of roses left for her to follow. The flowers lead her back to the antique vaulted door with the porthole in the center. She pulls it open and steps into the greenhouse. Inside, a thousand candles flicker. Rain beats down on the glass roof. Thunder rolls in the distance. In the warm candlelight, Lucy finds Ted wearing a tuxedo. <laughs> oh, Conk! You're dressed <laughs> like a man. <laughs> you look very handsome. Conk has something for Lucy. <laughs> he reaches into his pocket and pulls out a ring. 
He drops to one knee and takes her hand. Mary Conk, Lucy. Not John, man. Conk, love you best. Mary Conk. Oh, Conk. Okay. So, we, uh... <laughs> From the darkness, Hidgen surges. No, Mary Conk! Lucy, marry me. He's completely naked and swaying his arms over his head like an orangutan. Professor? Not Professor. Me am Hatchet Field Ip Man. Me am Lost Hominid Species. Missing link between Homo erectus and Homo sapien. Professor, I'm very confused. Conk is liar. Conk is guy named Ted Ackland. No, Lucy, Conk is Conk. Professor should go fuck himself, huh? Uh, when did you learn that vulgar language, Conk? Him, not Conk. Him, Ted. Look what hidden in Conk's stump. Oh, oh, it's Ted's phone. Pigeons pulls an iPhone from the hollow stump where Ted and his things. The professor starts scrolling through Ted's pictures and apps. Oh, uh, stop it. Stop it. Look. Uh, Ted's Facebook, uh, Ted's Tinder profile, Ted's Pornhub premium account. Conk, what are you doing with a phone? Oh, uh, that's not uh, Conk's uh, phone. Uh, uh, oh, shit. It's hopeless, Ted. You never learned how to yes and. Lucy, I can explain. What? No, that can't be! Oh, but it is! And you're not going anywhere, I'm afraid. Not until that Stockworth fortune is mine. Before Lucy can reach the door, Hitchens retrieves a handgun. He's hidden under a fake rock. He points it at Lucy. So you can either marry one of us, or you can die. Lucy makes a break for it. Hitchens pulls the trigger. Bang! Lucy! Ted dives into the bullet's path. Oh! He goes down, blood spilling from his gut. Conk! Lucy grabs Ted and drags him from the greenhouse. Before Higgins can get in another shot, Lucy slams the vault door shut. She whirls the locking wheel, trapping the professor inside. Higgins rushes the door and presses his face against the porthole. There's madness in his eyes. Lucy! Open this door! Let me out! Let me out! He abandons the door and runs for a tall tree in the center of the enclosure. He scurries up the thing with incredible speed, hooting and howling like an ape. He reaches the, he reaches the top of the tree and smashes the glass ceiling with his fist. Rain pours in as he climbs out to freedom. Outside the vaulted door, Lucy cradles the wounded Ted. His blood leaks onto the black and white tiled floor. Oh, Conk. Or is it Ted? Oh, please. Let me die. As Conk. I want to thank you, Lucy. You made me the ape man. I never thought I could. We'll get you out of here. You'll be all right, please. Please don't die. I love you, Kong. With the last of his strength, Ted reaches up a shivering hand and touches her face. His eyes roll back. His hand falls. He goes limp in her arms. Dead. Lucy holds him and weeps. Until, bang! A nearby door explodes open. An enraged Higgins kicks through the debris, the smoking shotgun in his arms. Lucy, I'm home! Lucy struggles to her feet and runs for it. Professor Higgins hobbles behind her. She rips through the manor's winding corridors, knocking over chairs and vases behind her, anything she can do to slow down her pursuing assailant. Professor, please, 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 you stop! Lucy! 
You got some splaining to do! She finally reaches the front entryway. She throws open the large double doors and hurls herself out into the storm. Wind whips her face. Rain comes down in buckets. She bolts for the deep darkness of the hatchet field of Witchwood. Sharp spiny branches tear at Lucy's arms. The ground beneath her is a runny sludge, sucking her feet into the mud. Then, snap! Something springs up to bite her shin. One of the professor's traps. Ow! My leg! Lucy claws at the metal teeth that have pierced her boot and sunk into her skin. As she struggles to her feet, Higgins creeps through the subsiding rain. All right, Lucy. That's enough. I gotta admit, you gave me a better chase than Jonathan did. No, 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 please, please, no. Oh, stop crying. I don't have to kill you. I'll make you a deal. I'll let you live. As long as you sign this check. The storm dies just in time for Higgins to reveal a check. He holds it out for Lucy to see. See? I'm not completely unreasonable. I'm not greedy either. All I want from you is 30 million dollars. Just enough to fund my musical. Working boys. Would you like to hear the pitch? It begins with a spotlight on me. I'm sorry, I can't. Oh, what do you got to do that's so important that you can't spare a few minutes to listen to a pitch, huh? No, no, no. I, I, I mean, I can't give you the money. What? I've spent the Stockworth fortune in my search for the ape man. But, but why was Jonathan trying to marry you? For my title! I mean, I was trying to marry him for his money so I can continue my search. Uh, oh. You idiot! You goddamn idiot! As Hitchens raises his shotgun and takes aim, Lucy grabs a nearby fallen branch and swings it with all her might. Wham! <laughs> he tumbles into the mud. Lucy uses the stick to pry open the bear trap. Scrambles to the nearest tree and starts to climb as Higgins crawls to his feet. Oh, you think you're gonna climb a tree now? Who do you think you are? Becky Barnes? That's a bit of hatchet heel lore for you. One time Becky Barnes climbed a tree and she didn't come down for two days! But she had to come down eventually. Just like you gotta come down. And when you do, you're gonna listen to my pitch! Then I'm gonna pump your guts full of lead! Please, someone help me, please! Help no me. one can hear you! You were stupid enough to follow me out here into the middle of the Witchwood! Just like you were stupid enough to believe in the hatchet field ape man! There is no ape man! You hear me? There is no. Oop. Suddenly, Higgins is lifted into the air by a huge, hairy figure. This monstrous thing takes hold of the professor's arms and starts to pull. Oh my god! No! Not my arms! Not my arms! Plop! Pigeons' oh. arms are ripped clean from their sockets. He plops to the muck below with a sopping bloody thud. <laughs> Above, Lucy clings to a branch for dear life. The limb snaps and she falls. But, but she's caught by a pair of big, strong arms covered in thick black fur. Oh my, Yusef. You fall again, Lucy. He looks up into the eyes of her savior, the kind almost human eyes of Woollyfoot, the real Hatchetfield Ape Man. It's you. It's really you. I've been looking for you all my life. Tell me, what's your name? Chumby. Chumby. Lucy curls into the ape man's embrace, and he carries her off into the mist.
a little story about the Hatchetfield Ape Man. He was born someplace in the fucking woods. He is tall, he is short, he is good or bad at sports. The point is that nobody knows all I know about the Hatchetfield Ape Man. He's an ape man. And how we leaned left and right Ooh. Ah. Ooh. ah He has two left feet But he dances the can can He can Are you even He me? can He weighs two dozen tons But he's rather slight Nothing? Okay He eats meat He eats grass He gets tons of a bass And honestly, why do you care? If you want to know How the legend himself began Ask the ape. This is so stupid. He's not even real. Man. He's a real nice guy that can rip off your face. Wait. What, what was that? He can rip off your face? No. No. He can't. Wait. Are you serious? Rip off your face? Part two, Watcher World. A yellow AMC pacer putters along through the witchwood of Hatchetfield, headed north towards a very special place. Bill Woodward excitedly drums his fingers on the steering wheel. He turns to the passenger seat where his 18-year-old daughter Alice sits staring at her phone. What you looking at? Nothing. That Instagram? Yeah. What's on Instagram? Nothing. Okay. So, uh, I hear Watcher World's got the tallest roller coaster in the whole Midwest. The tearjerker. Alice isn't listening. She's scrolling through pictures. Ugh, this is gonna be so fun. It is, isn't it? No, Dad. Deb's throwing a party tonight. At, at her parents' lake house, there's gonna be a jet ski and a keg, and... I'm missing it. <laughs> Why would she throw a party when she knows I'm stuck going to Water World? Oh, I don't know. Maybe she's jealous of all the fun we're gonna have, huh? Huh? Oh, it's one party. You'll catch the next one. <laughs> There's not gonna be a next one. Deb's grandmother is taking you to Amsterdam on Monday. Then she's going to early orientation at her art school. I might never see Deb again. Well, hey, here's hoping what? that that doesn't happen. But even if it does and life takes you two in different directions, that's probably for the best. Deb will go be a starving artist and you'll be a doctor. I'm gonna be a playwright, Dad. Well, you don't know what you're gonna be. You ain't got time to figure it out. The point is, you gotta give Deb some space to live her own life. Like I always say, if you really love her, let her go, let her go. You are <laughs> so full of just... Love and wisdom. I know. Hey, my buddy Paul said somebody died on the tearjerker. They had a pre-existing heart condition, but still, we gotta ride it now. At around 10 a.m., the AMC Pacer pulls into the parking lot of Watcher World, an aging amusement park on the edge of Hatchetfield Island. Alice and Bill park and make their way to the front gate, above which is an enormous welcome sign bearing an image of Blinky. 
the Watcher World mascot. They pass under Blinky's massive yellow eye with its purple iris. Then Bill steps up to the ticket booth. Hello there, sir. Welcome to Watcher World. Ready to watch all your dreams come true? Sure am. Can we get two tickets, one adult and one child? Dad, are you serious? Two adults. Sorry, she'll always be a child in my eyes. Dad, please stop. <laughs> You're embarrassing me. <clears throat> Uh-oh, look like we got a daddy-daughter dispute on our hands. Tell you what, I'm gonna go ahead and give you the child price. She is your little girl after all. Hey, thanks! Now you two go and have yourself a day worth watching. And Princess, remember, you take care of your daddy today. Blinky's got his eye on you! Inside the park, hundreds of sculpted eyeballs cover the gift shops and food stands that line the entrance arcade. Alice looks around at the creepy decor and the masses of blissful park guests. Bill can hardly contain himself. Okay, I'm gonna go grab a flash pass. You want some eye candy? No, thanks. I'll wait here. We're doing it! As Bill rushes off, Alice leans against a bench and takes out a stick of gum. She notices a sign on a nearby lamppost that reads, Please keep our park clean. Blinky's watching. On the sign is an image of Blinky. Looking closer, Alice sees the creature's pupil is in fact the lens of a small security camera. She pops the gum in her mouth, tosses the wrapper to the ground, and flips off the camera. Fuck you, Blinky. <laughs> She turns to wander off, but bumps directly into an enormous yellow eye. Oh, Jesus! It's the Cyclopean costume head of a Blinky mascot. Purple fur and various shades covers his rotund form. Alice catches her breath. You scared the shit out of me. Oh, that's a bad word. Sorry, Blinky. <laughs> The purple monster with one yellow eye for a head points to Alice's gum wrapper on the ground. Aww, you made Blinky cry. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Pick it up. Okay. <laughs> Alice bends down to pick up her trash, the hem of her short shorts rising. Blinky watches. Nice view. What did you just say? Uh, nothing. <laughs> Stay away from me, creep. You don't like Blinky? <laughs> no, I don't. You'll be sorry. Bye-bye. Blinky steps back as a gaggle of park goers passes. When they do, <laughs> he's gone. <laughs> then a hand grabs Alice's shoulder. Hey, Alice! Look what I got us! It's Bill. He's holding two Blinky hats. He pulls his on. A large yellow eye with purple furry lids covers the top of his head. He offers a hat to Alice. I'm not wearing that. <laughs> Alice frowns. The Blinky hat on her head. She and Bill are now at the top of a hill on the eye drop, a tacky eye-themed log ride. All right, here comes the drop. Put your hands up, Alice! No. They go over the hill. Big splash. Alice gets off the ride, dripping with gross theme park water. Great. Now I'm soaked. <laughs> well, there's a cure for that. Alice stands in a gift shop, looking into a mirror at a gaudy, oversized t-shirt she's wearing. It reads, I survived the eye drop, and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. <laughs> that is a good shirt. <laughs> really? I think it's kind of lousy. Well, if you don't like it, pick out another... <laughs> I didn't know you were funny. <laughs> Later, Bill munches on cotton candy. Alice drags her feet behind him, stops and throws an arm around her. Alice, look, look, there's a photo op in front of Drowsy Town Station. He pulls her toward an eye-covered train station, readying his phone for a selfie. He tries to worm her way out of it. I'll get one of you. No, come here, come here. 
He leans in close to her and frames up the picture, noticing her unenthused expression. Oh, I see. We're making pouty faces. He does the click duck clips <laughs> and snaps the pic. Oh, there you go. Look at us. We're models. Oh, we gotta, we gotta gram this. <laughs> Don't tag me in that. <laughs> tag? How do I do that? Uh, friend me on Instagram so I can send you this picture. You don't friend people, you follow them. Well, I'd follow you anywhere. Tell me about it. <laughs> Bill okay. finally finds her profile on his phone. Is this you? Uh, why can't I see your posts? Because my account's private. Oh, that's a good idea. Don't want Ted or his nerdy little brother stalking you on there. How do I get, it, get in, though? Dad, it's private so that you can't see it. But I want to know what's going on in your life. If I want you to know something, I'll tell you. Well, you don't tell me anything. Exactly. You know, this really is a good picture. I bet you could be a model if you wanted. You could be anything. A doctor, a lawyer. A playwright. Well, you got time to figure it out, but there's no rush. Oh, shit, shit, quick, Alice! Alice, the next show's about to start. Bill rushes to the entrance of the Watcher World Theater, where there's a sign displaying showtimes for Blinky's Watch Party, a musical extravaganza through Drowsy Town. Dad, I, I don't want to see some stupid kitty show. Oh, but Alice, it's a musical! Okay. Inside the theater, hundreds of screaming kids and their sweaty parents sit on long, sticky benches. The house lights dim, and Alice crosses her arms. Wake me up when it's over. Oh, come on, you humbug. You can't sleep through the show. Crowd quiets down, and an announcer's voice rings out through the sound system. Ahoy there, boys and girls. Welcome to Blinky's Watch Party, a musical extravaganza through Drowsy Town. Please silence your cell phones and refrain from flash photography. You don't want to blind Blinky. He's always watching. Now, enough snooking around. Let's start the show. Come on, Sniggles! From all around the theater, the Sniggles come running in. They're weird antennaed people things with fuzzy wing arms and purple shirts that say Blinky on the front. Hey, everybody! We're the Sniggles! Don't be scared. Cheery music kicks in, and they sing. Hey, Sniggles, do you know what time it is? It's time for the Blinky song, of course! That's right! Yeah! Blinky's got those eyes that really bug out the red and yellow wee. Blinky's got that fur that really spills out and makes the town drowsy. In Drowsy Town, we shake and move and don't upset our boss. Cause if we do, his eye gets red and he might just spill our guts. Blink once, blink twice, if you get the sniggle urge to move. Blink once, blink twice, if you're gonna shake your feathers soon. Oh, you got to, got to, got to, got to get the sniggle wings in sync. Oh, you got to, got to, got to, got to Move the speed as fast as you blink All right, Snickles, give me three claps Great, now give me four How about five? Now don't blink If you blink, you'll wake him up Don't you blink And if you wake him up, we die Don't you blink Don't blink Don't ever blink Don't you fucking blink Oh, I blinked Yep, you woke him up. Great, we're done. Oh, no, 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 no. In Drowsy Town, we do our best to never ever cry. Cause if we do, our boss gets mad, and then we don't eat for a week. I'm so hungry. Blink once, blink twice. If you get the sneak alert to move. Blink once, blink twice. If you're gonna shake your feathers soon. Oh, we got to, got to, got to, got to get the sneak wings and sink. Got to, got to, got to, got to Move as fast as you blink The Blinky song ends to thunderous applause. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. 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 
Yay! Yay! Alice watches, scratching her head. Okay, uh, what are the Sniggles? Are, are they birds or monsters? <laughs> what am I watching and why is it so stupid? Now you know how I felt when I had to sit through Dear Evan Hansen. Come on. On stage, the bearded Sniggle leader, Papa Sniggle, calls out, All right, Sniggles, last one to the Snackle shop is a rotten Snoogle. They all run off, except one pensive Sniggle, who takes center stage. Her best pal pokes his head back on and asks, You coming, Snigglet? Go on without me, Snigglots. I'm all snoggled out. Okay, see you in a Snig. Sniglots exits, and Sniglet turns to the audience. Hey, everyone. Can I tell you something? Something I never told anyone? The other Sniggles just wouldn't understand. She steps into a spotlight and starts to sing. When I was two, I knew just what I wanted. A snore for poo that screamed and puffed its haunted dreams. As I grew up, I stopped being what I wanted. A snigger who danced and shouted nightmare schemes. Snooze old town is near And the snooze old train is here And when I go down to snooze old town I'll know what's lost is found I'll find a handsome snook And snort his handsome hooves And we'll have to that can snozzle our own by you where the boogle boggles flow with glue. but snooze old town is near and the snooze old train is here and when I go down to snooze old town I'll turn Call for Sniggles. You coming, Sniglet? I'll catch the next one. The spotlight on Sniglet fades, revealing Sniglots standing there, staring at her. You're a liar, Sniglet. What? Why do you want to leave Drowsy Town? I, uh, uh, I don't. Do you want to make Blinky cry? Uh, uh, no, I, I never said that. I, I, don't I you wasn't... lie to me one more time with that dirty little mouth. Do you think Blinky's stupid? Do you? Uh, no. He's always watching Stiglet with a thousand eyes. Praise the Watcher! Praise, Praise, the, watcher. The, watcher. Praise the Watcher! Praise the Watcher! Praise him! Sniglet whirls around to find the other Sniggles surrounding her in the dark. She looks pathetically out to the audience. Tears stream down her face. Her voice shakes. I, 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 I don't think I want to do this show anymore. It doesn't matter what any of us want. Blinky's not done with you yet. And he's never going to let you go until he's seen everything. The Sniggles advance on Sniglet. She pleads. No, please. As terror fills her eyes, 
Papa Sniggle hops on stage. Look out, Snigg Sniggles. Drowsy Town's been overrun with snuggle bugs. The lights bump. All around, smiling mechanical bug rabbit things pop in and out of holes in the whimsical set. What are we gonna do, Papa Sniggle? Don't you worry. I'm gonna whack those snuggle bugs with this mallet. Yay! Hey, Papa Sniggle holds the large mallet and the crowd goes wild. <laughs> There's one! He brings his mallet down on one of the mechanized rabbit things. A realistic splat sound plays over the loudspeakers. Well, there's another! Splat! He whacks another snuggle bug. All the sniggles howl in delight, except Sniglet, who watches on with horror. Ooh, that's a big one! Papa Sniggle swings his mallet ferociously. He misses the snuggle bug and whacks Sniglet square in the jaw. <gasps> He goes flying to the floor, blood and a few teeth spray across the stage. Oh my god! The music cuts out. The crowd goes silent. The Sniggles all look to each other, unsure of what to do. After a moment, the director of Blinky's watch party runs on stage. He kneels beside the actress playing Sniglet. She's not moving. Angela. Angela. Angela, are you alright? Ruby, call the medic! Uh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to- I, Shut up, I Jeff! You're drunk again, aren't you? No, I, I'm Stone Cone Slober. I, I... Oh, Whoa! The Papa Sniggle <laughs> actor ducks behind a set piece and pukes. The director feels for Sniggle's pulse. Oh, God, she's losing a lot of blood. In the audience, Alice stands. I is that lady all right? An usher touches her shoulder. Ma'am, please stay seated during the performance. <laughs> on stage, on stage, one of the Sniggles asks the director. Is there anything I can do? You can shut the hell up, Lauren. <laughs> Soon, the stage lights go down, the curtain closes, and the announcer voice breaks the silence. Uh-oh, boys and girls. Blinky spotted some commotion backstage. Y'all sit tight while we work out them snooks. After about 30 seconds, the house lights come up, and exit music plays. The crowd quietly gets up to leave. Alice sits. Okay. <laughs> Dad, what the hell did we just... She turns to Bill, but he's been asleep for some time. Huh? Is it over? I... I was just resting my eyes. On her way out of the theater, Alice stops by the usher to ask... Hey, um... Is that woman alright? Uh... What woman? The usher's attention is taken by an impatient mother. Excuse me, when's the next show? Fifteen minutes, ma'am. Aaron! Aaron! Get over here right now or we're leaving! Later, Bill and Alice sit on a bench near a food cart selling funnel cakes and churros. While Bill snacks, Alice reflects on the watch party. Either something went terribly wrong or that got <laughs> strangely dark. First, you don't like the show because it's for babies. Then you don't like it because it's too dark. It's almost as if you don't like anything. You gonna finish that elephant here? <laughs> no, I don't like it. Alice hands Bill the pastry and turns to her phone. Oh God, no! What, what now? Ziggs. Ziggs is going to Deb's party. Who? Ziggs. Hello, Ziggy? This really cool non-binary person Deb used to have a crush on? And they're bringing Quiplash. Quiplash? Is that a friend of Zig's or? No, it's a game and a well-known teen aphrodisiac. Of course that's why the party is tonight. I'm not gonna be there to keep them apart. And Deb's gonna hook up with Ziggs. I just know it. Well, then maybe Deb isn't the right girl for you. Look, Dad, you may have let every romantic relationship you've ever had fall apart, but I'm committed to Deb, no matter how many problems we have. I'm just saying, if there are problems... The problem then... is that someone just had to get divorced. <laughs> Couldn't have waited one more year. I, I got ripped out of school my senior year and shipped to Clivesdale. 
I hate Clivesdale. I lost all my friends. I'm gonna lose Deb, and none of it is my fault. You're right. It's not your fault. It's your mother's fault. Now let's go ride the tearjerker. Bill and Alice stand in the massive line to ride the tearjerker, the tallest roller coaster in the whole Midwest. Alice watches the people around them. One group catches their eye, a teenage couple, Craig and Allison, and their third wheel, Beth. Uh, Craig sucks down a soda from a souvenir cup while Allison squirms. Why are you wiggling, babe? Drank too much Coke. I gotta pee. Hmm. Well, here's a cup. Pop a squat. <laughs> Gross, Greg. I can't hold it. I'll meet you guys at the exit. Allison hops out of the line and heads off in search of a restroom. Craig and Beth watch her go. Then they turn to each other. Thank God she's gone. They embrace, <clears throat> necking hard. <clears throat> Beth pulls back to ask, Is it fair to do this to Allison? Was it fair to me when she switched schools? <laughs> I guess what she doesn't see won't hurt her. She, she, she inserts her tongue back down his throat. Eventually, Craig notices Alice staring at them, at him and Beth. He makes eye contact and smiles. Why don't you take a picture, huh? It'll last longer. Then Alice is, notices something about Craig, something she's noticed about several people here in Watcher World, come to think of it. The irises of his eyes, they're purple. And as Craig smiles at her, she's filled with a distinct feeling of dread. Then the obnoxious teenager running the ride calls out, Single riders? We got any single riders? I'm a single rider. What? Uh, right this way, ma'am. What are you doing? I want out of this line. But the line's half the fun. Then you stay in it. <laughs> Alice rushes to the front of the line. Bill hurries after her. Hey, I'm a single rider too, but I want to sit with her. Slow down, sir. That's not how the single rider works, okay? You'll be placed in the next empty seat. Get out of my way. Bill pushes past the obnoxious teen. Alice is getting into the two-person ride vehicle with a man who seems to be in a, in a hurry. But Bill dives into the seat bef uh, beside her first. Hey, I'm next. Dad, what are you doing? Sir, I'm going to have to call my manager, sir. Ah, oh, forget it. We got any single riders? The ride vehicle pulls out of the loading area as Bill angrily fastens his seatbelt and turns to Alice. What the hell is your problem? What? You wanted to sit together? We're together. Yeah, but I had to cut someone. It was embarrassing. Oh, you're embarrassed? <laughs> you could have waited 20 seconds for the next car. I wanted to be with you. That's the whole fucking reason we're here. What? Bill notices Alice tensing up as the ride vehicle climbs the first and largest hill of the coaster. I just, um... I don't like heights. <laughs> then why the hell are we on the tearjerker? You know it's the tallest roller coaster in the Midwest! Cause you wanted to ride it! I don't even like roller coasters! Well, maybe I'd know that if you told me one thing about your life! <clears throat> He's stopped by the sound of the ride vehicle screeching to a halt. Beneath Bill and Alice, chains thud, metal scrapes, something clanks and clatters. Then, nothing. Uh, what was that? I, I... I don't know. They've stopped at the peak of the hill, 425 feet in the air. Alice starts breathing heavily as the announcer's voice plays through the, a nearby speaker. Uh-oh, boys and girls. Blinky spotted some commotion down the trackways. Y'all sit tight while we work out them snooks. Dad? It's okay, sweetie. It's just, it's just a technical difficulty. This happens all the time. Did you say, um... Someone died on this ride? No, I, I, I don't think so. Yes, you did. Whoosh! A powerful gust of wind blows by, shaking the entire coaster. Beneath them, beams and pillars moan and creak. Oh my god, 
<laughs> oh my god, why is it swaying? It's supposed to do that. It's got to sway a little or the whole thing will blow over. It's going to blow over. <laughs> the nearby speaker, which is bolted beside another small security camera, crackles with static until the obnoxious teenage ride attendant's voice comes through. Uh, hello, passengers. You may have noticed that the ride has stopped, so please stay inside your cart with your seatbelts fastened. We're going to send a maintenance guy up to get you momentarily. Get us? Why, why can't we just write it down? It, it, it's okay. Uh, look, there's a staircase right next to the track. We'll just walk back down the way we came. <laughs> I can't. I can't do that. Um, uh... Dad, I'm, um, I'm having a panic attack. I need to get down. I need to get down. Okay. Bill okay. looks around. He eyeballs the staircase next to the track. Uh, he looks to his daughter. She's shaking with fear. He thinks for a second. He undoes his seatbelt with a click. When he starts to stand, the speaker blares. Oh, sir, please stay seated and wait for the maintenance guy. Boom! In the distance, thunder rumbles. Lightning flashes. The gray clouds overhead begin to drizzle rain. Bill shakes his head at the approaching storm. Fuck that! Come on, Alice! He steps out of the ride vehicle and onto the metal grated stairs. He reaches back and motions for Alice to follow. Dad, 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 I can't. Hey, we have to go now before the steps get too slippery. Come on. Alice slowly unbuckles her belt and climbs from her seat. Bill takes hold of her left hand and reaches for her right one. It's holding her phone. I got you. Give me your hand. Put your phone in your pocket. It won't fit. Okay, I'll take it. Here. Alice passes her phone to Bill. He reaches around to slide it into his back pocket, but the screen is already slick with rain. The phone slips from his fingers and falls. He watches it ding past the metal grated stairs and plummet down 425 feet. Alice, whose eyes are shut tight, hears the ting. What was that? Uh, nothing, just, just don't look down. Look at me, okay? Alice opens her eyes and Bill starts to lead her down the staircase. Another gust of wind swooshes past. Alice grabs the handrail as the structure beneath them gently sways. Dad? Keep moving. Look at me. I'm, I'm not going to let you fall. You're America's next great playwright, right? <laughs> Tell me about the play you've been working on. No. <laughs> you got you a scholarship. Must be pretty good. Bill continues to lead Alice as she takes a deep breath. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, it's about a girl. You sound great uh, so far. What, what's that girl do? What's she been up to? <laughs> well, she's she moves to a new town and uh, she's gay. Love it. Yeah, and she falls in love with a girl, and and uh, <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything, but uh, the girl's basically a vampire. <laughs> that sounds scary. And it's a comedy, Dad. <laughs> sounds funny. Okay, but it gets a little sad because they both die in the end. No, I only wrote it like that to get the scholarship. <laughs> the judges are suckers for that kind of thing, you know? When I actually get it pr produced, I, I want it to end happy. Alice looks around. Without her even realizing it, Bill has led her back down to the tearjerker's loading platform. Her muscles start to unclench, and her breathing returns to normal. She turns to her father. He smiles at her. I'm proud of you. Uh, can I, uh, can I have my phone back? Uh, we're gonna get you a brand new one. You dropped my phone. Uh, yes. I'm sorry, but... You dropped my phone? Well, I was a little preoccupied. I need my phone! Deb is having a party at the lake house. I need to be liking her post so that she knows I'm watching her. Jesus Christ, Alice, would you grow up? I'm trying. I'm trying to grow up, but you won't let me. I should be at the party, not at the shitty Disneyland knockoff. You made me come here. You made me ride that stupid ride. Why are you always ruining my life? 
You know, Alice, I love you to the moon and back, but you make it very hard for me to like you. Oh, so now you don't like me? Well, that's fine, because I hate you. Alice storms off, leaving Bill on the loading platform. Rain drizzles down onto him. All around, the entire line of park goers has been watching the fight with hungry, purple eyes. Later, the storm subsides, the sun goes down, and thousands of electric bulbs light up Watcherworld. Alone and upset, Bill strolls down a midway full of carnival games. The Barker at the High Striker Strongman game calls out to the crowd. Come one, come all, test your strength and win it all. Bill glances over and the Barker points to him. You there, sir. Yes, sir. I'm talking to you, sir. Step right up and win it all. Oh, thanks. Oh, from a come rat, on. From a ra oh, oh, sorry. Oh, come on, sir. Everyone wants a blinky doll. From a rack full of them, the Barker retrieves a furry purple doll with a large yellow eye for a face. He dangles it in front of Bill. Tell me, sir. You got a girlfriend? Boyfriend? Mother? Nephew? Third cousin twice removed? No. Oh, wait a minute. You've got a daughter, don't you? Yeah. But we're not exactly speaking at the moment. Oh, well, nothing says I'm sorry and I love you like a blinky doll. What do you say, sir? All right. What the hell? Good man. Smart man. But are you a strong man? Let's find out. Two bucks for a whack, ladies and gentlemen. Bill takes out his wallet and hands the Barker two dollars. In return, the Barker hands Bill an enormous mallet. It's heavy in his hands. Bill winds up and brings the mallet down as hard as he can on the game's lever. <laughs> Pow! The lever flings a small puck up a tower towards a bell at the top. But Bill's swing must not have been very powerful because the puck doesn't even make it halfway up the tower. Oh, so sorry, sir. It's harder than it looks, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. Better luck next time. Bill steps back and the Barker hands the mallet to the next person in line, a small child. And here you are, little girl. Whack! The child hits the lever and the puck shoots up the tower, ringing the bell with ease. Ding, ding, ding! We have a winner, ladies and gentlemen! Here you are, my dear. He hands the girl a blanky doll. Bill watches, his brow furrows. Hey, could, could I give that thing another shot? Why, of course, sir. Two bucks for a whack. Here. Bill forks over the cash. He swings the mallet and does even worse than before. <coughs> Ooh, pathetic. Bang, bang, bang. Elsewhere, Alice holds a pellet gun to her shoulder, staring down the smoking barrel. She's just hit three bullseyes at a shooting gallery carnival game. The cowboy working the booth tips back his hat, impressed. Woo! That's quite the eye you got there, cowgirl. Here's your prize. He offers Alice a blanky doll. Yeah, I don't want that. But what do you want, my dear? Alice looks over to find a small old woman standing outside a fortune teller's shack. She smiles at Alice with a toothless grin, pointing to herself. Madam Iris knows. Madam Iris sees all. Go suck some crystal balls, lady. Crystal balls? Crystal balls? <laughs> no, no. Are you dead? From beneath her starry purple robes, Madam Iris reveals a familiar, fully intact iPhone. Alice's eyes go wide. Phone. Back at the strength tester, a frustrated Bill slams the mallet onto the lever with all his might. The puck hardly moves. <laughs> oh, so sorry, sir. Another swing and a miss. You are a weak man, sir, a very weak man. Do you take credit cards? But of course, sir. Bill jams his card into the Barker's hand. Charge it until I win one of those goddamn dolls. In Madame Iris's hut, Alice sits on a large pillow, 
scrolling through Instagram. She's furiously swiping past pic after pic of Deb, getting closer and closer to Ziggs. The two are dancing, then drinking, sharing a joint, blowing smoke into each other's mouths. I knew it. I knew it! Shit. Spit sprays from Madam Iris's toothless mouth as she cackles. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Not what you wanted to see, I wager? I shouldn't even be here. This is all his fault! It is, it is. But it's not too late. Madam Iris has foreseen it. Leave now and you will love me, let me save. How? My dad's not gonna let me leave. He wants me to see this stupid parade. You don't need him. You just need his car key. He's going to ruin your life forever if you don't put an end to it now. From beneath her robes, Madam Iris reveals a hunting rifle. He offers it to Alice. What do you say, Alice? Give it a shot. For Deb. Bill swings the mallet to no avail. <laughs> He keels over out of breath. The barker puts a hand on his shoulder. Sir, I think you've had enough, sir. I can do it. You've spent $400, sir. You can buy one of these dolls in the gift shop for $49.95. It's for my daughter. Bill forces himself to his feet, lifting the mallet over his head. The barker turns to the crowd that's formed all around. Oh, he can't even do it for his daughter, ladies and gentlemen. No wonder she hates his guts. Bill swings. The puck doesn't budge. He's a failure as a father. Again, the puck isn't moving. He was a failure as a husband. Again, nothing. He's been a failure his whole fucking life. We know. We've been watching with a thousand eyes. Bill swings the mallet, only this time he sees Alice's head on the end of the lever. Before he can stop himself, Bill smashes in his daughter's face with a bloody splat. The lever sends the puck flying up the tower. Dong! It hits the bell so hard the thing breaks right off. We have a winner, ladies and gentlemen! Yeah. Yay! As the crowd goes wild, Bill drops to his knees. He pushes the mallet from the lever where he could have sworn he saw Alice's face. There's nothing there. Bill is... Bill breaks down. Alice, oh my god, what did I just do? You won, sir. You're a strong man, sir. I'm proud of you, sir. I love you, sir. He leans in and tenderly kisses Bill's cheek. Just, just give me my doll. Sir, I don't think your daughter needs a doll. I think what she needs is a good swift kick in the ass, sir. If you don't mind me saying, sir. What? Ungrateful little brat. That's what she is. Why, right now, as you're busting your ass for her, always for her, she is scheming. She's going to get away from you if you let her. You know what they say about little birds leaving the nest? You have to clip their wings or they'll just fly away. Barker helps Bill to his feet and puts the mallet in his hands. All around, the crowd watches, nodding, pleased. The parade starts at nine, and uh, we're all counting on you to be there, Bill. Make it a day worth watching. Watcher World's main street is dark and empty. The park guests are nowhere to be seen. Alice stands at one end of the street, the rifle in her hands. At the other end, Bill approaches, Dragging the heavy mallet behind him, he spots Alice. The two stare at each other. Bill lifts the blanky doll into the air. I won you this. Won it. <laughs> I thought you'd say that. Alice shoulders the rifle. I want the keys to the car. And I want him now. You know, you've ruined every vacation we ever had. With your whining, 
and complaining, every Christmas morning, every Thanksgiving dinner, every 4th of July, all of them sacrificed on the altar of your spoiled little ass. Bang! Bang! The yellow eye of the blinky doll in Bill's hand explodes into a mess of fuzz and stuffing. Alice's gun smokes. <laughs> Next one goes through your eye. The keys now, old man. Seems we've reached an impasse, because I'm not leaving until we've seen some fucking fireworks. I've got some fireworks for you. Right here. All right. Time for some tough love. <laughs> Bang! Alice takes a shot at Bill. He jumps out of the way, tosses the blinky doll, and grabs the mallet with both hands. As both father and daughter run to attack, the electric lights flicker on, illuminating Main Street. Though it seemed empty in the dark, a crowd of hundreds lines the street to watch the fight with purple eyes. Blinky himself stands atop a gift shop and bellows. Welcome to the show! <laughs> yeah! Yay! Bang! Bang! Alice fires at Bill. He dodges, ducking behind trash cans and lampposts. Blinky claps with fiendish delight. <laughs> Bill reaches Alice, swings the mallet, and knocks the rifle from her hand. Shit! The gun goes skidding under a park bench. Alice dives for it. Bill lumbers after her. I'm gonna hurt you, Alice. I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm, I'm just gonna break your goddamn legs. I'll take care of you. I'll take care of you good. <laughs> Leave me alone! Alice reaches for the gun. Bill swings down the mallet, cracking the bench into splinters. I just want you to need me! Get a hobby, dude! Alice seizes the rifle and jabs the butt into Bill's stomach. He grabs his gut and falls forward. She takes off in the into the direction of Blinky's funhouse. Soon, Bill hobbles inside in slow pursuit of Alice. He finds himself in a darkened maze of mirrors. He limps along, calling out, Alice, Alpha. Where ya hiding? Bang! Smash! A line of mirrors shattered to pieces, revealing the hidden Alice. She took the shot, but missed. Damn it. There you are! Alice takes aim, but Bill reaches her before she can get in another shot. He swings his mallet. Alice rolls from its path. Smash! Another mirror explodes into a shower of broken glass. Alice drops the rifle to shield herself from the falling shards. She looks up to find Bill looming over her. Okay, you're gonna stop running from me. I'll make you stop running. Hold your legs still! Bill raises the mallet above his head. But before he brings it down, he catches himself in the mirror. He sees his own furious reflection, a purple glint in his eyes. He stops. He looks down at his daughter. She's breathing heavily. She's shaking. What are you waiting for, sir? Only two bucks for a whack. In a nearby mirror, the barker appears, his purple eyes glowing. In another, the ticket taker. I gave you the child price, sir. Take care of her, daddy. Come on, Papa Schniggle. Whack that snuggle bug. The Sniggles now fill the mirrors around Bill, chanting, Whack her! Whack her! Whack her! Whack her! Whack her! Fucking whack her, dude! The Sniggles, and Craig, and the Barker, and the Ticket Taker roar, demanding blood. <sighs> and Bill drops the mallet. He kneels by his daughter. She's having a panic attack. It's alright, Alice. Look at me, sweetheart. Look, look at me. She looks into his kind, brown eyes. The Barker shakes his head. You weak, weak man. That's not how it's done, sir. This is an amusement park. But not for your amusement. This is Watcher World, Bill! Everything that happens here is for his amusement! And Blinky can't stand this contrived, sappy-dappy bullshit! <laughs> Sniglet nods with a swollen, bloody mouth. Sniglet screams. You made Blinky cry! Spit flies from Madame Iris's toothless scowl. 
Blinky wants blood. And guts! And he will have them, sir. He'll take them if he needs to. He's always watching. But I guess sometimes that's not enough. Goodbye, sir. All around, the reflections vanish. For a moment, there's nothing in the mirrors but blackness. Endless blackness. Then, smash! Mirrors all shatter, and Blinky comes running at Bill madly, wildly. <laughs> then, bang! Blinky stops dead in his tracks. He reaches up to the bullet hole in the middle of his yellow eye. <laughs> Alice holds the smoking rifle in one hand and flicks off the mascot with the other. Fuck you, Blinky. She throws the gun to the floor as Blinky cries in pain. From the wound in his eye, a gleaming purple sludge starts spilling out. It sprays everywhere. It flows like a slimy river. Soon the purple ooze fills the mirror maze, catching Bill and Alice in its current. They reach for each other. Dad? Alice! The purple goo floods the funhouse, pushing Bill and Alice outside with massive, oily waves. They're carried by this river of slime down Main Street, through the Washerworld Entry Arcade, past the main gates, and into the parking lot. Bill and Alice tumble to the ground as the purple glue flows past them, dispersing into the surrounding woods. Bill looks to his daughter, jostled and covered in slime. He shakes his head and asks, Do you remember where we parked? Alice holds out her hand and Bill drops the car keys into it. She presses the button on the fob. In the distance, they hear a soft <laughs> beep beep. Bill sits behind the wheel of his AMC Pacer, driving south through the Hatchetfield Witch Woods. He glances over to the passenger seat, where Alice sits staring at her phone. What you looking at? <laughs> I won't cry. Alice finishes what she was doing and tosses her phone into the back seat and rolls over to get some sleep. Bill's phone pings with a new notification. Alice Woodward started following you. He smiles and drives his daughter home.
All right, guys, there you go. That was the first episode of uh, of Nightmare Time. Thank you, thank you so much for tuning in uh, to to this uh, reading. Um, thank you, thank you all very much, and thanks to everybody who is in the cast. Let's uh, let's take a look. We had uh, we have Matt on the piano. Woo! All right. Go Matt. We got Robert. Woo! Robert. We got Mariah. Yeah. We got John. Woo. We got We're James. Done. Woo! We got Joey and Lauren. Yes. Woo! Jeff. <laughs> Kurt. Woo! Hey! <laughs> Angela. All right. Yeah. And Corey. All right. And Nick. We... And oh, Nick. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. And Nick. And Nick. 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 Yeah, yeah. And then uh, also, who's been who's been keeping a watchful eye on all of us uh, yeah, yeah. is uh, is Corey Lubowicz helping Yo, out oh helping out with all the tech stuff. Daddy. Yeah, he's Daddy. he's somewhere. Yes. So um so I figured we'd um stick around for a few minutes just to you know this is essentially like the closest we can get to live theater uh, <laughs> during during COVID times. So um this is essentially like our stage door kind of thing, guys. Um, so we're here. We're here to answer any questions that you guys have. Um, maybe for like a few minutes, we'll um, answer some questions. We'll talk, check in with everybody, see how everybody's doing. And um, also, in case you didn't notice, in the description of this video, there's a link to, um, to a page where you can tip, where you can tip these guys, you know, that would be great to uh, try and um, support some of these artists that you guys like during during these tough times. I know that it's rough, but it would be very helpful and it would help us to keep doing stuff like this because right now we're trying to figure out how exactly are we gonna get you guys content when we can't you know, do theater, we, uh, we can't get a bunch of people into rooms together. But um, I think we've now found out that this is going to last for a while, so um, we got to figure out how to how to deal with it and how to keep going in this circumstance as opposed to just waiting for it to be over. Um, so, everyone, how's it doing? How how you doing? You guys all doing well? Good. Doing good. Right? Hanging loose. Yeah. That was awesome. So this fun. is so good. Yes. I'm so happy to be back with you guys. Like I'm bursting at the seams. <laughs> I was in my closet getting ready. I was like, it's like we're in the theater. It's, I know. it's 10 on. minutes till curtain. Oh, my God. Put on this jacket just made it, made it all so real. It's so awesome. God, it's time to do it. Time to do the thing. Jeff, where's your vote backdrop? <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh, I, yes. uh, I don't have the system. I can't do the green screen thing. My That's system. Right. Well, not with that attitude. <laughs> right. You're right. Yeah. Tell him, James. Tell him. It looks like. Yeah. I would just yeah, make a real sign, Jeff. You need to plan ahead for that. You vote or eternal blackness. <laughs> these are your choices yeah yeah there you go um yes yes we are all living through a uh, our own nightmare time in real yep. life so, um, <laughs> so these uh so these stories are kind of like a actually a, a break a break from our reality yeah um i'm out of focus right now but yes if you have not registered to vote please vote oh vote 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 it's it's imperative um, okay, so let's take a look. We'll see if there are any questions for people. And, um, all right, let's see. Question, question, oh, this is all happening too fast. <laughs> um, and slow-mo mode is on. Oh, yeah, I'm looking, yeah, that <laughs> chat is like, it's, it's very fast right now. I'm gonna pull up the chat just to watch. Wow, this, all right, this Bad. is, this is something. Um, if anyone catches any, if anyone that is a faster reader than I am could could catch a question, that would be great. I Nick, I, I caught I caught one. Yeah. Um, go for people it. are asking about Blinky. Is it going to be on sale in the way that Wiggly was? The Blinky doll. Um, I uh, hopefully maybe one day. Uh, we have we don't have anything worked out. This is just a prototype that we made, but um. So we met this character tonight. We met Blinky, um, and he's got there's some significance to this guy. Why does he look so much like Wiggly? I I don't know. Maybe we'll find out. Uh, I got a question from M. Uh, asked who did the orchestrations? 
the orchestrations, just the under the underscoring oh. or the um the songs? Both. I don't know. Maybe both. The songs themselves were <laughs> Jeff, and then I do this thing during the whole show. <laughs> <laughs> I just I wrote down a few things. I wrote down the themes from Jeff's songs, and then I'm, I just kind of throw them wherever I can, just to make sure there's constant background stuff. So it's essentially Matt was just just improving that whole thing so yep. um Woo! he was just kind of going with the flow so Rock he's very star. talented <laughs> and and, and then, we, yeah go we should it. plug his uh ep that he has coming out yes yes that's matt killing yes. it dude oh thank you guys thank you guys I wait just... wait matt aren't you aren't you a grammy nominated composer no, now no 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 whoa no 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 we're You're not we're, we submitted a four-year consideration for, oh, for I thought I saw Grammy. news that you got nominated. No, no, no. That's just a for your consideration. I wish, but hey, if there any Grammy, oh, Grammy well, voters out there, Jeff hey, was just secreting the Grammy voters in the universe. Well, it's yeah. gonna happen. He's just putting that it was, out there. That was our yeah. way of saying, if you're a vote for the Grammys, check out a record called Starry. It's oh. totally yeah. lit. Still cool. Yeah. Hello, Still cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, hey, so, I have a question that is, what happens to this stream when it finishes? Does it go up on YouTube? What? What's? Yeah. What, yeah. As soon as this stream is over, it will then be processed by YouTube and just stay up on the channel for everyone to watch for until the end of time, which who knows, maybe it'll happen soon. We don't know. Uh, but uh, so this is going to stay up here. Episodes two and three, which are coming soon. The, uh, we have episode two is coming out next week. Uh, same same time. It's going to be around the same length as, as this episode, so two stories. That one is going to be like a ticketed live reading. So we're still working that out, um, but we'll let everybody know 100% how much uh, the tickets will be. Again, it's like, uh, you know, we're, we want these uh, stories. We want to keep getting you guys content during uh, times when we can't make a musical. Uh, or can't make a live musical. So uh, we just want to make sure that we can figure out how to, in some way, make this sustainable. So in some way, have these things at least, you know, pay for themselves. So that would be great if you guys tune in next week. Uh, we have two more stories. We have three more songs um, uh, for, for next episode. So the two stories next week are called Forever and Always uh -huh. and Time Bastard. Uh -huh. um, so we'll, uh, we'll, I wonder what those ones are about. We'll find yeah, out. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, and then uh, in the last week on the 24th, on Saturday the 24th, we'll again have two more stories and three more songs. It'll be another ticketed one. Uh, that would be great if you guys could tune in. That one uh, has two more new stories called um, Jane's a Car and uh, and The Witch in the Web. What? 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 Um, what? So, so there's going to be fun little things. So you guys, after seeing this episode, you get the, the feel for it. It's like we've got kind of like these anthology stories that are slowly building out the world there are little hints here and there and um but you know you can watch any one of these stories and hopefully it's enjoyable just on its own two feet um Nick, okay will the music be available from these at any point mm. yes yes the music will be available i want to know mainly for me because these are bops and i want to listen to all of them <laughs> <laughs> on my yeah. own time yeah. right um we uh this is uh yeah, the the album will be coming out soon. I don't know when exactly. Nice, um, Jeff. Oh yeah. Jeff, oh, I just a saw a lot of a lot of uh, people have asked um, like two related questions. One is this canon, and two are these all one universe, or is each story its own separate universe? You guys gotta piece it together. I can't. I can't answer all these questions for you. All I, all I know is that you know Ted was dead at the end of a guy who didn't like musicals, and um, he died again. So uh, <laughs> you know everybody was, was so he was, he was absolutely blown to smithereens at the end of Black Friday too, as was everyone else. 
That's up for We're debate. Both. I think they were evaporated. Or we don't know yeah. that. <laughs> See, I read a, a theory on Tumblr that was from Reddit that was on a Twitter account that was posted on YouTube that said, <laughs> oh, wait, now I forgot. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think I read that same one, James. You guys right, yeah. are I think it was so deleted. awesome. <laughs> the thinking was, that comes into place. I thought it was just Santa Claus at the end of Black Friday flying over. Yeah. There. It's only Santa. Yeah, yeah it might be Santa <laughs> Claus. Only Santa. Santa Claus. Um, so, yes, all of these stories are canon, though. Yes. Are we, are we bringing this to the stage, these stories? Uh, probably not these stories specifically because they're all kind of shorter, you know? They're all about half the length of what a musical would be. And um, I don't know exactly how to stage the part when Alice and Bill are on the roller coaster. <laughs> yeah. Just a lot of... Have a lot of blocks. I'll, I'll accept that challenge. I Corey will and I will out. figure Some this out. <laughs> we'll figure it out. <laughs> um, but we, we will. We will. We <laughs> will. Uh, but we do have uh, plans for Nightmare Time. Again, guys, if these things go well, if um, if enough people buy tickets, yeah. if enough um, people get get onto that little PayPal link that's down below and and uh, maybe tip these guys a little bit um then we can uh hopefully make more of these things and then we'll see what goes from there like i would love to do more episodes than just the initial three that we have uh coming up and we actually have more stories more stories that we uh couldn't even fit into this round so so there you go a few people are asking for clarification on the spelling of conk. Is it with a K or a C? <laughs> it's with a K. K O N K. Conk. <laughs> That's important. crucial. It's yeah. crucial. <laughs> it is. It is. It is. With a writing K. Writing fan fiction, writing I love conk. You want to respect this? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Getting that tattoo. I was know, just going to say <laughs> tats. Tats. Yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I was, um, I don't know if anyone looked at me during that because I'm not in that one. I was dying. I, I had one of those moments where I texted, like, I texted Corey and I was like, thank God I'm on mute. Like, it was just <laughs> so funny. <laughs> so funny. Gonk. Uh, gonk. Yes. I am gonk. Fun here, getting naked. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I saw some people asking about Nerdy Prudes Must Die, which is um, the, uh, another Hatchetfield musical we've been working on. Uh, that one, uh, you know, obviously we can't do it this year. There, are, there were two things that were in the pipeline for this year that kind of got thrown off. One was Nerdy Prudes Must Die. Uh, we'll have to see when we can do a live uh, stage show again. Um, and when, whenever that's possible, uh, that's when we would start, start up doing the musicals again. And then there was Workin' Boys, which is the uh, short film that we were going to make. Uh, we were supposed to do it this spring. Um, it was like a Kickstarter reward for last year's Kickstarter. Um, and, uh, but, uh, you know, COVID kind of came in and made it very uh, hard to get a bunch of people in, in a room at the same time. Uh, so that made filming very, very difficult especially when you have no money. Uh, so we, um, so those two things have been put on hold, but we're gonna, we're gonna figure them out uh, and we'll do them as soon as possible. Yay. Uh, let's see. Okay, some people have asked this on the trailer as well of who did the animations for the Nightmare Time thing. It's, uh, they're all from uh, Shutterstock you too can buy <laughs> license this footage and put oh, it yeah. into your stuff. Cool. Um, so, so uh, yeah, if you just go onto a website called Shutterstock and type in <laughs> yes, scary, scary like, animation, yeah. you it too. Looks like oddly appropriate. That's <laughs> great. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Um, Nick okay. Lang edited all the videos though. Together. Yes. Yeah. Nick Lang's a boss. Nick Lang's a boss. Don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> Yeah, we uh, all got to see them for the first time on Thursday, and it was delightful to see what you did with all of our. Yeah, we we all geeked out. We yeah. geeked the frick out. Because uh, I don't know, yeah. I don't know about you guys, but like when I sent the video, I literally apologized in the video. I was like, Nick, I don't know what I was doing, but oh here it is. Yep. And hope it works. Yep. 
I saw it's people ask if the videos are going to go up individually. Like, are the songs going to go up as their own video? I don't know. Um, y- yes. Y- y- some some of them, yes. Yay. Uh, I want to watch this over and over personally because everyone looks sexy. So. <laughs> <laughs> I want to watch. You know what? You guys have <laughs> never, never looked, looked better. better. Yeah. Never <laughs> looked better. <laughs> never looked better. Never looked better. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> not to shove this tip jar in the faces of our viewers, but people are asking, they don't have money right now, how long will the tip jar be open? The jar is, is always there. The tip jar, I went to go make it today, and it turns out it, we made it back when we did a Harry <laughs> Potter musical. So, <laughs> oh my has, god. So it has existed for 11 years. Oh um, so, so, <laughs> So get on there and <laughs> and do some little little tips, whatever you can do, uh, will be good and, and highly appreciated. Um, I saw some people asking about Ziggs, uh, the character that is mentioned um, by uh, Alice in this past story uh, with Ziggs and Deb. Um, we we've got we've got plans for Ziggs, so we'll we'll see if they come into it. Um, I'd Can I like be honest, that. though? I read that. I got so sad. Broke you got my sad. Heart. It broke my heart, Nick. I was like, damn. It's so with, hard to be 18. It, it is hard to be to be yeah. 18 with um with Deb. Maybe Deb is not... Um, I know. Maybe Deb is a little bit uh, fool, fooling around. Well, actually, everyone's asking. They're, like, freaking out. They want to know if Deb cheated on Alice. They yeah, really want to know this. Really Ooh, okay. Here's the thing. Smoking at his mouth. Like, put the Deb clues together. I, here's the question that I ask. Is do you guys think that those pictures that Alice was looking at on Instagram, do you think they were yeah. real pictures? True. Or do you think they were created by Blinky specifically to torture Alice. That's wow. what I was thinking at the this whole time. Yeah. Okay. I was like, I, I can't yeah. tell if this was created in this universe of trying to like. Um, maneuver Bill and uh, you know Bill and Alice into into their needs. So that that was interesting. I was thinking about that too. You know, none of none of us know. So we're yeah. in the same boat, <laughs> essentially. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Nick knows. Nick knows. <laughs> um. Uh. So. Um. All right. Uh. Any Any other questions? Let's see. How long have we been doing this for? About two hours. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I was born in 1989, hours. so. <laughs> um, first role was when I was four. <laughs> let's uh, let's do like three more questions, and then let's and then let's call it a night. Um, and again, I'll, I'll uh, I'd love to mention that little tip jar. So if you guys can, uh, any anything you can you can do to help make these things possible and make these things sustainable, um, that would be great. Greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. Let's try to find another question. I think this isn't a question, but people are commenting on the magnificence of your hair, and I just want mm. to. Yeah. It's all an illusion, it bomb. guys. It's all an illusion. It's no. all long. Oh, from you're back. a boss with good <laughs> hair. <laughs> Tell him. Tell it's, him. It's all majesty. from the back, combed to the front. So this is called a comb over, guys. You look beautiful. <laughs> called a comb over. Um, so we'll see how long this lasts for. Um, my hair, that is. Uh, what was the significance of the reference to Becky Barnes? Becky Barnes climbed a tree. Yes. I, I guess we'll have to find out. It's one time she, one time she climbed a tree and didn't come down for two days. You know, oh, someone guys. wrote something really important on here. They wrote, I'm tired. It's 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> go to bed. I, I pray for you to go sleep, please. <laughs> I'm sorry you're tired. I will yeah. say, though, the chat is going so fast. I'm looking at it like, ha, ah, like it's going so fast. Oh, oh, here's an important question. Are the tickets limited for the next two shows? No, I don't okay. think so. I think because of the internet, they're unlimited. Oh, Anyone I think I think there's like I think you can only allow like 15 people on the I internet at, the, at a time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, well. 15 people allowed on the internet, and that's, that's unfortunately it. it. Just uh, 15. Bidding yeah. war starts. Yeah. Yeah. If if around the world only 15 people could use the internet, <laughs> maybe that's how we make it safe. That's how we do well, it. Or we start World oh, War Three. One of the two. 
sounds great being like i can't get on the internet it's not my i'm I, there's too many people on it yeah could like you imagine if you had a card or like a chip that like allows you to access the internet but it's like it only works at specific times yes. no. yeah. oh my god why you have to vote candidates into office that support net neutrality all right because there we go yeah. segue thing <laughs> good job um, i have a question yeah, joey was job, the was segue. the beard was the beard your ultimate long game for tonight was this your long con this is dedication to his craft. You'll find, you'll find out. Ooh. TBD. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was such a crazy answer that there's just nothing to say. Um, <laughs> I'll say nothing. I'll um, say nothing That was good, all. Joey. Um, um, yeah. I, I, I saw it just a... Ju you go for it. Sorry. No, I was just going to say something that was uh, passed into the chat where a lot of um information about and faqs about the live stream and the tickets yes. and stuff are all on the star kid website and as are the scripts this or the script oh nice right right yes um this was a, a live thing so we couldn't do any kind of uh captions or anything like that so the script is going to be available on the website the the whole script for this episode including the lyrics so if you guys uh, had trouble understanding what was being said or or anything like that uh, the script will be available for you guys to download um, I saw some people saying is um, are the are the ticketed episodes going to be on YouTube and it uh, eventually but I don't know when hmm. we'd really love for you guys to get those tickets you know <laughs> and uh, that that would be great um is Hidgens a real professor? Yes. yes. I've seen yes. that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's Hidgens lot. Hidgens is a real professor. He's just that, messed by up. That, by that we mean he actually is a professor, but also he is a actual real professor living in the world right now. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. He's here. Look around. He's inspired I, I believe he lives in to Montana. pick up Henry Hidgens and Robert, you go bother those here. people. Go bother the Henry Hidgens of the world. It's their office hours. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, who would win in a fight between Blinky and Wiggly? Uh, would they fight, guys? Would they fight? I don't think no. so. They'd work I together. Think, yeah, they're teammates, There's right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're teammates for sure. <laughs> oh. I don't know. I guess we'll have to find out. You'll have um, to buy both dolls and experiment. <laughs> and throw them at each other really hard yeah. and then <laughs> see who survives. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, they, yeah, there will be more, there will be more information on on everything coming in in future episodes, so um, keep your eyes peeled. Uh, okay, any other questions or anything like that? Hmm. You guys have fun. Did it, everyone have fun? Well, personally, I had a great time. I, thought... I had a blast. Yeah, yeah this is awesome. All month, this is a blast. This is it. And it's also just nice to be around really talented people. You guys are amazing, oh. and I'm uh, glad I get to work you with too, you. James. James. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to funny. cry right now. What's so strange is we we all like we're with each other in February, and we're like, okay, we'll see you all soon, and then that was it. So this is really like, yeah, six months in the making. It's a it's a really wonderful reunion. Personally, I'm me. just happy to be back. I mean, it's been a bit for for a little. Yeah, while. yeah, you were, you were off. Here. It, we're He's great here. To, it's Corey, great your like, background. I've been <laughs> looking for this for the last. Corey. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. No flies and nuggets. Hi, tonight. Diane. Is that Diane? Diane. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they Diane, want her. Look at her. Diane. Diane, ready to party. Diane wants you to oh. vote. You actually. Oh my goodness. Vote him out, Diane. Diane. Oh, Diane. Yeah, that's a good question. What's everyone's voting plan? Oh my God. <laughs> I'm still waiting on my ballot to get here. I don't know James! where it is. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm also yeah. waiting on my ballot. It just ballot. came last week. No, I'm in that stress period because I'm moving. So like it's to my new address and I'm really stressed about it. But you know me, I'll call 10 times to make sure I can vote. <laughs> good for <laughs> you. I'll do it. I'll annoy people. <laughs> that is right. But it's rough. Anyway, vote. Are you guys mailing All it right. or are you going to take it to your voting place? I've got I'm mine filled out and then I'm going to take it there. Like the, I think like the polls open on the 30th, I want to say. Yeah. Or yes. You yes. Can, you can take it in person early to uh, your polling place. At least I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's countwide, but I know in LA County, it's I think 30, yeah. 30th or 31st they open. Yeah. And 
in California, they have like numerous drop off boxes that you can drop off before the actual voting day. Amazing. Yeah. The there you go. Right? Definitely the vote early. Vote early. Yes. Because, oh boy, we're going to be dealing with this for so long. <laughs> also, vote. and be, and because of that, because uh, most of the country is voting by mail at this point and absentee and all that stuff, um, the election results are going to take longer. So yep. don't expect like the night of to nope. get an answer. No. Nope. It's going to take some time. So. so if you can, vote early so it can offset kind of the people that have to mail in and all that stuff. I've yes. been listening to a lot of podcasts about this. A lot of like there are not night ups anymore, and it's like wow, look at us, the new age. Yeah, but uh, we that they it. don't start counting them early. Why do they wait till? No, they do. They do. Ooh, count. Ooh, they, they, don't they? Yeah. Yes. Um, okay, guys. So <laughs> <laughs> this has been great fun. Thank you thank all so you. much for tuning in. Thank, um, you. Uh, thank you so much. Check out that tip jar. Come back for episodes two and three. Everyone, you want to take one last bow? We'll wrap things up. <clears throat> bravo, bravo. Thank you all so much. I love so you much. guys. Thank you all so much. And thank you guys for tuning in. And uh, we will be back next week with Nightmare Time episode two, Ooh. which featuring Forever and Always and Time bastard. And Jamie will oh. be here. I and Kim. See you next week. And yep, Jamie yep. and Kim. You new may... friends. And yes, not me friends. and Angela, but we'll new... be watching. <laughs> new we'll <be> friends. Watching. <laughs> new friends. Eventually, everyone from any Hatchetfield show is going to get in here. Yes. So there we go. Thank you guys all so much. Uh, Matt, you want to play us out? <laughs> play us out, Matt. Like, I shut it off. What are you play talking about? Ooh, what's he going to play? I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Let's get the hell out. <laughs> I hope it's the Price is Right theme song. <laughs> yeah, right? All right, what the hell am I going to play? I'll play <laughs> those peace signs, guys. Peace and love, everybody. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Have a great, great day. Happy Halloween. Let's keep it up. Two more episodes. See you next week.